Hello, <clears throat> welcome back to my channel. Um, haven't made a video in a couple of weeks and I've uh, been feeling a bit down and um, kind of um, not great. Uh, so I thought I'd try and make a video to cheer me up. I wanted to make a video. I wanted to make a video with a bit of uh, catharticism, I guess. Didn't really have any good ideas, but everyone's been making um, their reactions to the New York Times book review, 100 Greatest Books of the 21st Century so far. And I thought it would be kind of funny if I gave a reaction to it, mainly because I really don't follow mainstream, modern, contemporary um, books. I tend to read mainly um, obscure stuff or um, popular uh, books from the early to mid 20th century. Um, so <laughs> I probably have read very few of these, um, but I thought I'd go through it. Reacting to it um, should be pretty quick, but um, if there's any that I have been meaning to read or I like the sound of, I will mention that, but I think a lot of it will just be me skipping through. Um, but yeah, so here it goes. I have my uh, old Mac set up in the bedroom, uh, finally got it going again. So I've been kind of enjoying having kind of TV by the bed again. Um, it's just not great for reading, but uh, it's been soothing me at night. Um, so yeah, 100 greatest uh, books of the 21st century as voted on by, what do they call them, luminaries? Uh, influment, in, so it's the, determining the most important and influential books of the year. Um, and they sent a survey to hundreds of literary luminaries, which is a whole bunch of authors and people like Sarah Jessica Parker and Jenna Bush. <laughs> I don't know, is she in publishing? I don't know. I don't know why uh, they make a point to mention her. Um, okay, number 100, Tree of Smoke by Dennis Johnson. I have 2007. I haven't read. Uh, I would read. Um, but I probably wouldn't seek it out if it came across. If I found it in the library, I would get it out, for sure. Um, or if I found it in the little free library, something like that, I would get it. I wouldn't, probably wouldn't buy it, though. Or, um, I probably wouldn't even get it on, like, Libby library app or something. Um, 99, Ali Smith, how do we both? Um, not that interested in Ali Smith, even though they're Scottish. Um... Bel Canto by Anne Patchett, 2001. Um, I know everyone raves about Anne Patchett. So popular, so beloved. Um, never, n none of the premises have really ever done it for me to um, actually pick up a book. Um, Men We Reaped by Jasmine Ward. This is a memoir. Uh, this was released in 2013. I have been meaning to read Jasmine Ward. I don't know if I would start the memoir. Um, but it's definitely deals with um, subject matters and that that I am interested in. So I would read that. Uh, Night Six, Way With Lives, Beautiful Experiments by Sadia Hartman. Um, and that was released in 2019. Haven't heard of this one. Um, blah, blah, blah. Black girls who mother 20th century laws. There was a waiver for such crimes having serial lovers. Yeah, okay. Um, power of authority. Poor black women. Yeah, I, potentially. I would potentially read that. Again, it would probably not something I would... Uh, oh, I think that's non-fiction, right? It's not something I would uh, necessarily seek out, but if I saw it, I now know about it. Hilary Mantel, Bring Up the Body, number 95, and that was released in 2012. Uh, have not read, will at some point. I should. It's, um, it's probably that series, that Wolf Hall series is probably the most important series <laughs> written so far. Um, it's hugely popular, it's been uh, hugely uh, um, influential in getting people to um, read more about uh, English history and uh, that's obviously a very very important part of 
and such an influential era, um, Henry VIII did so much to shape everything that came after him. And his, 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 his influence is still positively and negative, definitely more negatively um, experiencing, especially in the UK, um, to this day. So I think very important. Zadie Smith on Beauty 2005. Um, yes, I've been meaning to read all of Zadie Smith's work at some point. Um, Station Eleven by Emily. Is it St. John Mandel? I guess because she's Canadian. But isn't she from Irish heritage? Is it St. John Mandel? I don't know. Um, 2014. Obviously, this um, was very popular before the pandemic, but then a lot of people kind of rediscovered it during the pandemic. And um, I own this, but I haven't read it. And I will at some point. Um, Elora, Elena Ferrante, The Days of Abandonment. Um, everyone I know loves these books. I have really been meaning to read them. Um, it deals with a lot of Italian like 20th century um, society, so that's very interesting, and especially if it kind of deals with some of the political attitudes. Um, post, post-war post Italy um, is v uh, very much the political situation was just uh, very tense, uh, very radical shifts, a lot of terrorist attacks, a lot of um, political assassinations. It's very interesting, very um, important reads. The Human Stain by Philip Roth, 91. I think I've only read one Philip Roth book. Um, and I don't even think it was one of the ones that's that particularly celebrated. Um, suppose, supposedly this is good. Late, late Roth, but, but good Roth. Um, maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, I mean, it was set in the Clinton impeachment, which... I feel it was, um, I feel like Clinton and the whole impeachment and the downfall of his, um, of his presidency has very much, uh, been there a lot of my life. I feel like it's quite a momentous part of my, of my, uh, life. So yeah, maybe yeah, that, that is, that is a, definitely a book to, to read from Roth. Uh, the Sympathizer by Viet Thanh Nguyen, Nguyen, is it? Viet Thanh Nguyen, yeah, right, um, 2015, um, her, a lot of people have said I should read this, um, but also there's people that said it wasn't actually that good. I, I have a feeling it's a book, it's a political thriller slash um, kind of parody, dark comedy kind of thing. But I feel like it's for people who don't read a lot of those. I think the less, it feels like the less you read of those, the more you'll like this book. And um, I, I've read quite a few, so maybe I won't read that one. Um, I think I probably have a copy though, to be honest. So I guess I will read it at some point. Um, the Return by Hisham Matar, 2016. I actually really need to read this book. Um, it, and this has actually kind of reminded me of it. I have kind of forgotten about this book. Um, but it did win the Pulitzer. I, and I think it won, like, the Folio Prize or something. It was the first, um, it was the first non-fiction book to ever win that. Um, and it's basically this, um, British, uh, I think he's, it's Libya, yeah, it's a British Libyan guy, um, basically returns to Libya after the fall of Gaddafi to try and find out what happened to his father, because his father was, um, a political activist and, and anti-Gaddafian, and he, uh, basically mysteriously must disappeared. He was kind of one of the disappeared, as allegedly, supposedly, um, a victim of the many, uh, Gaddafi purges. And um, and just p political assassinations. Um, but he does. He just never knew the full story. So it's just him trying to not only find out about that, but kind of reconciliate 
his Libyan identity with this the country that he left and kind of see what can happen post Gaddafi. The Collected Stories of Olivia Davis, uh, 2010. Um, no, that's a pass. Uh, Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. Huge booktube favor. I will definitely read this at some point. Uh, Frederick Douglass by W David W. Blight, 2018. Yeah, this was also actually um, really popular on um, booktube when it came out, when, when it came out in 2018 and, and a lot in 2019 too. Um, and I almost read it. I think I got it out of the library and then just didn't get around to it. So definitely think this, it's a big book though. I, I remember it's pretty big. So, um, but I don't, I don't really know that much about it. My American history actually knowledge is actually pretty poor. So I should read more. Um, George Saunders Pastor. Doralia from 2000. Haven't read George Saunders. Probably wouldn't start there. Um, I think it's a short story collection too. I would probably just read Lincoln and the Bardo. It's the biggest book. Um, the Emperor of Maladies by Siddhartha Mukherjee, 2010. Um, I've heard of this. Uh, oh yeah, it was, Pul it was Pulitzer Prize winner. Um, no, don't think I want to read that one. Um, <clears throat> Benjamin Labadut, uh, When We Cease to Understand the World, 2021. I, I'm getting the impression there's a lot of um, books from 2018 to the present. I, I mean, someone might want to do a little deep dive into this, but I, I feel like they're probably overrepresented. And, and I think it's more... Um, I think some of the books uh before that some people may have forgotten about or just lesser in their heads but does that mean that they're not great and influential or not as as, as these more modern books are these more modern books are, are they just gonna be if, if they when they do this list in 10 years time are the books on this list from 2018 to now, are they not going to be on the next list because people would have forgotten about those two and and the books from like 2028 and to 2034 will be on it instead. It's it's really hard to say, but I feel I feel that there's a lot of more recent books on this list and probably should be. Um, Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor. Uh, translated by Sophie Hughes. I should probably mention the translators. Um, when We Cease to Understand the World was translated by Adrian Nathan West. So yeah, The Hurricane Season by Fernanda Malchor. Translated by Sophie Hughes, 2020. Um, this was this was up for an award, wasn't it? So it was on... Um, was it the International Booker? Yeah, I think so. Um, so yeah, it was on YouTube. It was on Booktube a lot. So um, I... Did not get the sense I wanted to read it from everyone's uh, reviews. Um, Pulpet Essays by John Jeremiah Sullivan, 2011. Never heard of it. Uh, yeah, it's probably good, but I won't read it. Um, Ella Ferranti, The Story of the Lost Child, translated by Anne Goldstein, 2015. Um, yes, see, see above response. Uh, a Manual for Cleaning Women, Lucia Berlin, 2015. Um, no, I don't think I want to read that. I hadn't really heard of it. Didn't sound like something I want to read. Um, John Foss, Septology, translated by Damien Searles, 2022. Uh, pass. <laughs> um, an American Marriage uh, by Tahari Jones, 2018. I am very surprised this is on the list. I'm very surprised it's on the list and so high. Um, I haven't read it, but it got a lot of people mad. A lot of people were not happy this was on the... Was it the Booker Prize? Was it shortlisted or just long? A lot of people weren't happy that it was on the either list of the Booker Prize. Um, 
and I know it has its fans though. The people who like it really like it. So I think I, I did I read this? I think this might have been a book that I read like a quarter off from the library and then it needed to go back and I just didn't get around to finishing it. It's either that or I just listened to so many um, bookish content talking about it that it just, I feel like I've read part of it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I want to read it. I, I'm very interested by books that have strong reactions, whether they're positive or negative. And I'm very much intrigued by um, books that have very strong positive and reactions by different people for the same book. I think that's very interesting. <laughs> um, Tomorrow, Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Seven, 2022. Uh, no. Exit West by Moshin Hamid, 2017. I feel like I have this on my Kindle. <coughs> so I will read it. <laughs> I will definitely read that one. And it's an immigration story. Um, I tend to read a lot about immigration um, as an immigrant myself, <laughs> I like to, I definitely, um, immigration is something I feel very strongly about. Um, I'm more of like a no border type person than anything. Um, um, but I, I do, I do find those stories very fascinating and it's also um, very frustrating. It's very frustrating. Um, any immigration process is very, very frustrating. And for some people, like you just you just can never win. Um, and just the the word immigrant is is just laced with so much um, uh, baggage, I guess, for, that, for lack of a better word. Um, Olv Kitteridge by Elizabeth Strout, twenty two thousand eight. Um, I've heard so much good things about Elizabeth Strout, um, but just haven't wanted to read her and this was voted for by nick hornby who i quite detest so um that's not helping uh da, 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 da. what's this one um the passage of power by robert carroll so this is uh the years of lyndon johnson um it's the fourth volume of carroll's epic chronicle of lyndon johnson's life i would read a book about Lyndon Johnson's life, but I don't think I want to read four. So I think I would probably find somewhere else. Um, Svetlana Alexievich, Second Hand Time, The Last of the Soviets, which is an oral history and it won the no winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature. I feel like I have a Svetlana Alexievich book, but I don't know if it's this one. Um, this was translated by Belis Shevievich, 2016. Um, is this... Was this originally published in 2016? Or is that just because that's when it was translated in, into English? Because um, I thought this was written... I thought this was written more um, in at least the 90s. Uh, possibly it was even published and written, published during, um, like the Glasnost period. I don't know. Oh, so she's still alive. That's good. Oh, this is, uh, this video is a lot of man stares at screen, man Googles stuff. Do, do, do. When was this book written? I mean, she I she's not, is she a journalist, isn't she? she didn't she cover um? Was she a journalist? Yeah, correspondent for the literary magazine uh, Neoman and Minsk. She's um, Belarusian. Um, I think she's covered like the. I guess she's written. I guess she's known for her oral histories, um, and she's and with the Soviet um, uh, viewpoint. So 
written about the Second World War and the Afghan War and the dissolution of the Soviet Union and Chernobyl, all from a Soviet viewpoint. Where's the books? I think she's also a um, political activist, too, especially in um, opposition against uh, Lukashenko. Um, okay, here we go. Lots of awards and honors. Very awarded. Very lauded. Oh yes, I think I have. I have the unwomanly face of war. That's the book I have. Yes, I have the un unwomanly face of war. I think I have it in the. Uh, I think it's an NYRB. Um, and that was written in eighty seven. Okay, so The Unwomanly Face of War was written in 87, which was probably what I was thinking of. Or 85, sorry, 85. The English was published in 87. Maybe that's what I was thinking of. And then, yeah, then, um, oh, it ran, yeah, and then it was republished more recently, which is the copy I have. Um, da -da 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 -da. From Chernobyl. Okay, maybe this book was written in 2016. I actually don't even see it on here. It's yeah. Okay, whatever. Um... It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, second hand time. Anyway. Yeah, I'd probably read it. I'm going to read The Unwomanly Face of War first. Um, the Copenhagen Trilogy by Tova Ditlevsen, uh, translated by Tina Nunali and Michael Favala Goldman, 2021. Um, oh, okay so, okay, so this book is definitely a cop-out. It's Tova Dit Ditlevsen's book, uh, memoirs that she were originally published in the 60s and 70s in Denmark. Um, <clears throat> but it's only because they have paid in a, a one... Uh, a one book, English edition, that it's on here. Okay. Um, all Aunt Hager's children by Edward P. Jones, 2006. Um, never heard of it. Mm, no. Uh, the New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. I've read half of this. I'm pretty sure I read half of this. I need to go back. It's good. Um, it's nothing, nothing that I don't really know a lot, know about. Like, but it, I think it's good to read it, and then you can definitely recommend it to people who do need to read it, kind of thing. Um, the Friend by Sigrid Nunez, 2018. Uh, suffering the loss of an old friend and adopting his Great Dane. Oh, I probably... I probably would read that if I saw it, definitely. I'll look for out for it. It's got a beautiful dog on the front cover there, so... Um, Yes, I would read that. Andrew Solomon, Far From the Tree, 2012. Um, mm, no. We the Animals by Justin Torres, 2011. Uh, I've heard of Justin Torres. Uh, this is, Justin Torres has probably been reviewed. Uh, no, I wouldn't read that. Uh, the Plot Against America, Philip Roth. Actually, this is a Philip Roth book I definitely need to read. This is 2004. This is like right into my wheelhouse. Um, Basically, what if in the 1940 president election, uh, Lindbergh, um, who was basically, I guess most famously was an aviation hero, but for me, most well, most infamously was a Nazi sympathizer who had the ear of a lot of powerful people in America. What if he had defeated Franklin Roosevelt? Um, I think the only crazy um, pop part of this um, plot was I think Laurel Charles Lindbergh was like third party candidate. So it would it would have been 
a little bit more believable if he was the the Republican candidate, but I'm pretty sure he was third party, so he actually didn't really get very many votes. Um, so basically, specifically what would have happened to Philip Roth, the youngest son of a middle-class Jewish family in New York, New Jersey. Um, so it's, um, it's kind of one of those, like, uh, alternate history type things, um, to me, this, I always, the plot against America, I don't know if it came out, this, like, a similar time, um, but, um, Fatherland by, oh, I can never remember the guy's name. He has a similar name, is he a Philip too? Um, Fatherland, anyway, the, the kind of the, the British version of this, actually. Um, they, they, they both just are, um, in my mind, neck, neck. I've read Fatherland, though, Fatherland's good, it's good fun. Um, it's not a profound book, but it's it's a good alternate history book. Um, the Great Believers by Rebecca Mackay. Mackay, Mackey, Mackay. I'm ver I'm pronouncing this very Scottish. Uh, Twenty eighteen. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Eighty. This sounds depressing though. Doesn't got an eight story in there. Yeah, uh, I would, again, I would read it if I saw it, but I'm not going to go and seek it out. Uh, Veronica by Mary Gateskill, 2005. Mm, no. Um, ben Lerner, 1004. Do I have a Ben Lerner? I might have a Ben Lerner book. I might even have this Ben Lerner book, actually. Um, can't remember the others. Um, I don't even really know about him because he's been nominated for... Book up right, I believe. So, um, if I don't have it, then I'm not going to read it. I would only have it. I'd only read it if I have that one. Um, Demon Copperhead, Barbara Kingsolver. No, I don't know. I've. I don't know if I want David Copperfield set in Appalachia. I just. I don't know if I was asking for that book. Um. Ooh. Heavy, the Heavy by Kizzy Lehman, 2018. What I like about these lists, though, is it does remind you of books that you like. Oh, wait, I actually meant to read that. I just didn't get around to it. Um, so Heavy is an American memoir. And I actually wanted to read this. Um, what is the psychic weight of secrets and lies in his unvarnished memoir? Lehman explores the culminative mass of a past that has brought him to this point. His blackness, his fraught relationship to his food, his family, riven by loss and addiction, and in his mother's case, a kind of pathological perfectionism. What emerges is a work of raw emotional power and fierce poetry. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It just sounded uh, intense and emotional and powerful. Yeah, I just want to, I just, I want to read that. Middlesex by Jeffrey... Eugenides. I didn't realize this was 21st century. I, for some reason, thought this was published in 1999. Again, this, this, and um, uh, the vagina. Is it the vagina moth? Was that Jeffrey Eugenides? Eugenides. Um, obviously, they've been hugely talked about in my lifetime, um, and I haven't read them so. Am I going to read them now? Probably not. I think I have Middlesex somewhere, actually. If I have Middlesex, I'm going to read it. If I don't, I don't. I won't, probably. Maybe maybe in 20 years' time, I don't know. Maybe I'll have a... I really should have read that at some point. Stay True by Hua Husu, and again, 2022. Um, never heard of this. I don't think I've heard, actually heard anybody mention this. And it was a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. In 2022? Or, yeah, what? I don't, I've never heard of this. It's set in 1990 Berkeley. I don't know about that one. Nickel and Dimed on Not Getting By in America. Barber, uh, <laughs> Ehrenreich, Ehrenreich, 2001. Oh, I vaguely remember this. I didn't read it though. Um, I wonder what, it might be interesting reading it now to see, like, I w wonder actually if this existence in 2001 was 
more manageable and, and, and slightly easier than it is now. Jeez, I, yeah, because yeah, that was even before the financial collapse. So, you know, you got another like seven years before the major financial collapse. Um, yeah, wow. Because I was just, I was, I, I moved out of home in 2002. So, yeah, I would have, I would have kind of been slightly apprehensive about um, the future earning money, but in, I would have been apprehensive, but in 2001, I was just more concentrated and having fun and getting ready to go to university, which I did not say for because, oh, actually, but I think I was, was I the first, I think I was the first year that I actually had to pay for tuition, but it, was, it wasn't a crazy amount of money. And then I dropped out after the first year anyway, so. Um, oh, well, we're already on 56, how many long? 30 minutes, wow. I might cut this off at, at 50. Um, the Flamethrowers by Rachel Kushner, 2013. Nope, I have no interest in reading Rachel Kushner. The Looming Tower, Al-Qaeda and the Road to 9-11 by Lawrence Wright, 2006. I should actually read this. Obviously, 9-11 was one of the... Is iconic the wrong word? But it's one of the most talked about. Or probably the most talked about uh, event that has happened in my lifetime. Um, maybe the Berlin Wall collapse and the release of Mandela. They probably come. They're probably equal. To be honest, they're okay. We'll say those are those are equal, but huge, huge, huge event. And I was what seventeen when it happened. 17, come, no, almost 18, about 18, about a month and a half later. Um, yeah, and I was glued, glued to the TV for weeks, uh, watching anything I could about it, all the breakings, the news stories, everything. Um, 10th of December by George Saunders. No, I wouldn't read this one. I, like I said, I'll read Lincoln the Bardo, and that's it. Alice Munro, Runaway, nope. Dennis Johnson, Train Dreams. Oh, one I've actually read. I think this is the first one I've actually read cover to cover. And this was released in 2011. I read it in, I think, 2015, 2016 kind of time. And I actually read it on a train. So I don't know if that actually gives me bonus points. Um, I remember very little. I, all I remember is really enjoying it. I remember very little else about it. But I think... I think possibly it was his last book or one before last book. Um, and I was like, oh, I really probably should have read Dennis Johnson before now. This was really off. This was, yeah, it was really um, a good book for me. I really enjoyed it. Oh, this one was voted by Carlo Vanoshka too. I don't know if that, I don't know if that I like. Um, Kate Atkinson, Life After Life, 2013. Uh, I've I've heard of Kate Atkinson. What's Kate Atkinson's popular book? I haven't heard of this one though. Um, no, I think Kate, I think I see Kate Atkinson in the secondhand stores all the time, but I never feel like I want to buy one. Um, Trust by Hernan Diaz at number fifty, which is, this is gonna be the last one, 2022. This will be the last book I do on this one because it's 33 minutes. Mm -hmm. And, okay, Hernan Diaz, that was, I read their debut, I believe. Um, I can't remember the name of it, I'm sure it's on this list though. Um, it's the famous one. Oh, this one actually sounds quite interesting, I probably would read this one. It's set in the 1920s, or starts out in the 1920s. And then leaps forward in time. Huh. So it's kind of historical fiction. Okay, that sounds interesting. I'd probably read that. All right, and then we will leave it off of there, and I will do another one, I guess. Maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Who knows? See you later. Hope you're all having a good time, and uh, take it easy. Bye.